Hey there, welcome or welcome back. In this part of the trip, follow along as my mom and I take a girl's trip to Hanoi, where she was born and raised. We left Saigon early in the morning and landed in Hanoi just in time for lunch. We checked into our hotel, Anatole Hotel Hanoi, which is very nice and walking distance to the old quarter. I just got to Hanoi with my mom and we're gonna eat our way around the city, as always. Here we are walking to the south side of Huan Kim Lake to my favorite Bundok Mom Tom spot. Down this little unassuming alley, there will be a sign for another Bundok place on the right. It's not that one. The place we want is further on the left. Our first stop is Bundok Mom Tom, a Hanoi classic. What we have here is a bunch of rice noodles, bún noodles. Um, we ordered a mixed plate, so it has some boiled pork. This is one of my favorite things here, zoi, a blood sausage with fat and a lot of herbs inside. I believe this is not doizan, so it's a part of the intestines fried. Tia kom, pork sausage patty made with young green rice. Lam luok, boiled intestines. Nem zan or jia zha, the classic Vietnamese fried rolls. Đậu phụ zan, crispy fried tofu, one of the two namesakes of the dish. And herbs, and the way to eat it is with mâm tôm, shrimp paste. You squeeze in some um, kumquat. We've already done it. You mix it up. Take a piece of noodle. Dip it in. Mm. And then it's just a choose your own adventure. So good. The tofu out here is so, so good. Mm. It's crispy, it's airy, amazing. If shrimp paste is a little too much for you, you can order the platter with nước mắm chấm, a fish sauce based dipping sauce instead. It won't be the same, but better than missing out on this entirely. After lunch, we walked over to the lake, got some drinks at a cafe, and people watched for a while. It was a bit gloomy at first, but then the sun came out and hundreds of people showed up in their outside to take photos for Ted, since it was only a few weeks away at that point. Our hotel is very close to the old cathedral. There are always a ton of people gathering outside to take photos. We took a nap because it was an early morning. Now we are walking to dinner. We're having chà cá lá vọng or chà cá thang long. This is the restaurant, which is very well known. It's in this massive old mansion with walls of bamboos outside. We ordered one portion of fish and one of fish stomach. The fish comes pre-cooked, but it is then sautéed in front of you with a ton of dill and green onions. On the side, you have bún noodles, more green onions, a mix of Hanoi herbs, roasted peanuts, and mâm tôm, shrimp paste. When the greens have wilted like this, you're ready to dig in. We have to dip the fish in the mâm tôm, shrimp paste. Mm. The fish is super well marinated. It's in a combination of things like galangal, turmeric, and a bunch of other spices. Dill. You can also add everything to your own bowl with moon noodles, add in the herbs and the peanuts. Have everything in here. Mm. So good. We are now walking to a Jie place that my mom loves called Soi Jie Batin. Jie is a category of Vietnamese desserts that usually consists of different ingredients like beans, fruits, and jellies in syrup. I got bánh gom, a sweet rice cake, and my mom got jie. I think this was jie tập gom, which just means a combination of different things. 
ngon không? Rất ngon. It's a cool morning in Hanoi. We are just walking now to breakfast. We're walking to Soi Mai for some soy sale. I'm gonna tell you, I've been thinking about this for a year, more than a year since last September when we came because it's so, so good. So soy is a category of steamed sticky rice dishes in Vietnam. Soy sale is a Hanoi special. The rice is steamed with turmeric, giving it a beautiful yellow color, and then it's topped with shavings of mung beans that have been steamed, mashed, and rolled into a bowl. On top of that, you can have suok, pork floss, and da, pork sausage, or thịt kho, braised pork. They also have other types of soy here, soy ngô with corn, soy lak with peanuts, and soy guk with the bright red guk fruit. I got a classic soy seo and my mom got a soy ngô, the one with corn. Both were topped with pork floss and sausage. Mm. This place is so good. The rice is super soft and tender, but not mushy. And the um, shaved mung bean, it comes off in sheets like this. It's not dry. Um, it's nice and moist. The pork fluff is good. Let's try the da. Mm. Nice and fatty. Worth the wait. With breakfast done, we're headed to Batang village, about 15 kilometers from downtown Hanoi. We're in the Batang Gom village right now, and there are hundreds of shops selling beautiful ceramics of all different types, anything from vases to bowls, mugs, anything you can think of, decorations. They have been making ceramic here for hundreds of years, if not like a thousand years. They're just the masters at it. I got a set of these adorable little spoons and a set of 10 of these rice bowls along with some other things to bring back to France. I'll show you our haul when we get back to the hotel. These paintings are all ceramic. I wish I could bring one back with me, but they're quite heavy. We wandered around the village for a little while before lunch. A tip, if you're outside the ceramic market area, do not trust Google because it doesn't have information on these little alleys. We stumbled across this display wall and a beautiful courtyard of a place that was open for visitors. There are not a lot of options here for lunch. We went to the main restaurant near the ceramic market because I wanted to try some Batang specialties. We got su hao sao muk, sauteed dried squid and kohlrabi, gang mang muk, dried squid and bamboo shoot soup, and thi chai kai, fried pork, which isn't a specialty. <laughs> Mm. Super crunchy. You can taste the squid. It's really nice. While the flavors were good, chewing on the dried squid became tiring after a while. The kohlrabi was probably my favorite part. Super fresh and crunchy. Never had these before. They're specialty here. So we're trying. This is a bamboo shoot and dried squid soup. It's a bit lighter than a normal um, canh mang suen. Mm. They cut everything really thinly, so it's really fun to eat. I also got a guava juice. Here is the ceramic hall. I got 10 rice bowls, soup spoons, chopsticks rests, and the little spoons you saw earlier. Another day, another walk to dinner. Today for dinner, we're having ngan jai tai. There are three restaurants on this same corner and they all have people standing outside to wave at and invite guests to come to theirs. 
This is the one that we're going to. Here's the menu. They specialize in all things ngan, which is the Muscovy duck. We of course got the famous ngan chai tai, fried duck with garlic, i.e. the main reason we came here. It's served with some spicy fermented bamboo shoots, herbs, and a chili garlic fish sauce. We also got nộm chân ngan rút xương, Vietnamese cabbage salad with boneless duck feet, a bowl of canh mang ngan, duck and bamboo shoot soup, which has some blood cubes. We got bún noodles to go along with it. This is half a duck. Let's have a taste. Mm. Very flavorful, a bit chewy, as duck usually is, um, and very, very, very garlicky. So if you're a fan of garlic, this is the dish for you. Dip it in this spicy chili sauce. It's like boiling hot. It's so good. It's full of tendons and cartilage, so it's crunchy. Skin as well, a lot of collagen. Love that stuff. Herbs. But yeah, the duck is the star. Definitely chewy. If you're not someone who's into eating things off the bone, if you don't like super chewy texture, it might not be for you. But I love this stuff. Vietnamese people love to chew. We're walking to breakfast. It's day three in Hanoi. A bit of a rainy, gloomy day today. Today our breakfast is bánh khúc, also known as soi khúc. We normally go to Koh Lan, the one on the left, but a friend of my mom recommended the one on the right, so we're gonna try both and compare. Here is our bánh khúc. It consists of steamed glutinous rice around a ball of dough flavored with khup leaves, which is wrapped around a mashed steamed mung bean and fatty pork filling. It's topped with mui vung lak, a mix of sesame seeds, crushed roasted peanuts, salt, and usually a little bit of sugar. This one is from Kulan. Let's try it. The inside is filled with lak and mung beans. Mm. So um, the hoop leaves, la hoop, have a very unique flavor. You can't really find it outside of Vietnam. You might find soy hoop sold outside of Vietnam, but it's very unlikely that they were able to source la hoop. So the taste won't be exactly the same. Usually they'll use replacements like kale and other things to give the color, but there won't be the taste. Mm. The rice is nice and soft. The inside is, there's also a piece of fat in the middle. Super, super good. Next, we'll try the other one. This one is from Soi Kwan. I think the rice from this one is a bit chewier. Maybe they have more filling or more rice than the other one. Taste is very similar. Maybe the mung beans in this one is a little more fragrant. Um, but I think it tastes more la hook in the other one. Both are really good. After eating and people watching for a while, we went to Hang Ma, one of the old Hanoi streets where many of the businesses sell the same thing. This street is known for selling ceremonial goods and holiday decorations. We're here to buy some tête decor. I got one of these hanging tête decor pieces, the one she's cutting down in the back. For lunch, it's another Hanoi special, bún dọc mông. So this is bún dọc mông. We got special bowls. There's a little bit of everything. There's tongue, some like fatty pork belly bits, some ribs, some uh, leg bits, and some meatballs. The star of the show is dọc mông. Or in the south, you call this bạc hà. I'll put the scientific name up, but they're very crunchy. This is also in a bunch of other dishes, um, like kinh tua, southern kinh tua. Oh yeah, of course, bún noodles. 
Mm. Super simple but flavorful pork broth. You can really taste the pork. You also have a fish sauce dipping sauce for the meats. Let's try a piece of tongue. The dipping sauce has some mustard um, and some garlic. I've very rarely seen mustard in a Vietnamese um, dipping sauce or any dish. Mm, super tender. Tongue is a cut that a lot of non-Vietnamese people might be scared of, but very, very tender if you can get over the mental aspect of it. But yeah, love, love this very simple dish. This is a dish that we usually make at home. Mm. And of course, it's hanok, so everything is with kwai. I swear we did other things, but dinner is what you get to see next. We're at Phu Gang Weird for obviously some Phu Gà, chicken Phu. I ordered a Phu Dui Lung, which means leg and back. The back pieces are mostly skin, but for Vietnamese chicken, the skin is thick and crunchy um, and a bit chewy. It's very different than the skin for chickens that you buy elsewhere, and it's delicious. So before we start, i going to add some pickled, kind of vinegary garlic. Adds flavor. I'm going to mix it up. I might add some chili later. Mix that up first. <laughs> you can taste the chicken in the broth. It's so, so clean. Super light and clean broth. It's delicious. Proper northern noodles. Thin, freshly made. Mm. Oh yeah, it definitely shouldn't be as thick as pad thai noodles, which you usually find outside of Vietnam. This is a back piece. Mm. That skin is so good. This cures everything. So good. I love this place. And of course, you always have to have poi. Ah. For dessert, we're at the famous Kim Chang Tien, which has been an institution since 1958. It's one of those places that people from Hanoi still love, even though it's super well known and busy with tours. This is Kim Kom. It's young rice flavor. Definitely not a flavor you can find anywhere else outside of Vietnam. It's one of the only types of ice cream I'll eat. My mom has vanilla. It is now 9.30 p.m. in so-called winter and people are still dying for ice cream. Good morning, it's another day in Hanoi. In front of the cathedral right now, we're walking to breakfast. Breakfast today is the classic pho ba. Normally we go to Pho Thien Bo Ho, but today we are um, checking out Pho Suong instead. So we'll see if it's better than our regular favorite. So I got an order of rare and brisket. Let's give it a try. <laughs> it's pretty flavorful. It's on the salty side. Pretty clean broth. Let's mix this in. <coughs> pretty good. Noodles in Hanok are always good. Um, I haven't decided if I like this broth as much as the other place. But I'll report back when I finish the bowl. Let's try the meat. Very tender. That was the rare. And then this is the brisket. It's pretty chewy, but I like it. Of course, always play. 
And now I'm going to add some pickled garlic vinegar. And a little bit of lime. Mm. The vinegar always brings out the flavor in the broth. Final verdict, a decent bowl of pho, but the broth was a bit salty and not as fragrant as our usual place. After breakfast, we stopped by this cute cafe nearby for some coffee and tea and a slice of matcha crepe cake. For lunch, it's bánh giò. It's a pyramid dumpling made of rice flour, mainly. Um, inside, there's ground pork and mushrooms. I got beef sausage to go along. I'm gonna break it open. This one, you can kind of already see the filling. Let's have a taste. Mm. Very soft pudding-like texture. I love it. Beef sausage. Try a bit of the filling. This is best eaten super fresh like this. It's steaming. She only has like four chairs. Well, she has some more. She has a few chairs so you can eat here, but a lot of people take it to go. A good lunch or snack or breakfast. My mom had to stop by this place to get some bingzan mud, a kind of donut. No clips of her eating some, but they were good. Then, believe it or not, we went to get even more food. We went to Kem Caramel Zunghua for some creme caramel or flan, an influence from the French colonial period. Look at the jiggle. This is what it looks like. It's a flan or creme caramel, or in Vietnamese, people say creme caramel. This place is pretty famous. Mm. Yeah. Nice caramel flavor. Really, really smooth custard. Mm. That's nice. We came here mid-afternoon, so it was empty. But if you come here at night, be prepared to sit outside because it's always packed. So other than the food, we're also experiencing another Hanoi specialty, which is Murfun. It's just the teeny, teeniest droplets of rain. The rain just does not stop. You know, you can carry the umbrella, um, which you lose a hand and it's, it's annoying. If not, then after about five minutes, you get damp and then the cold starts to set in um, and it's not a, not a fun time so we chose the umbrella it's a cold night in hanoi and we're having snail you can't really see it but the bowl is steaming um, they give you a bunch of things to go with lemongrass lime leaves dipping sauce that has ginger and some lemongrass in it and then this is a bunch of ginger and um, chilies to add to your dipping sauce if you want. And these very sharp metal uh, triangles for you to stab the snails with. So you take one, pull it out. You only want this top bit. You don't really want the bottom bit like that. Dip it in your sauce. I like to make sure that I pick up a little bit of lime leaf. Mm. So crunchy. If you've had French escargot, it's not the same. Vietnamese snails are much crunchier. But again, Vietnamese people love to chew on things. So this is a good street snack. It's not really a full meal. So good. They also offer smaller snails here along with some clams and some other stuff so far we just have this bowl of snail we'll see if we get more I might add some more lemongrass to my dipping sauce yeah look at that fat snail mm. and the dipping sauce of course has nook mam 
little bit of lime or vinegar. Super good. After the snails, we headed to Jeo Dong Suan, Dong Suan Market for the second half of our dinner. Snails were appetizer, and now we're going to warm up our stomachs with some Jiao Suan. So this is rice porridge. This is very different than regular Jiao that you see because this is made from blended rice. Essentially, it's rice flour, so it's super silky, more like a gravy texture. And it's served with zuo or Jia Bong in the south. See, it's steaming hot. Mm. So good. The texture might not be for everybody, but I love it. Every time we go back, I have to go. It's a bit like eating baby food, but it's delicious. The porridge itself is made with uh, ribs broth. So very, very flavorful kind of gravy that you have here. And of course, as always, quite. Full of Tao, we took the scenic route back to our hotel and took in the beautiful sight of Hanoi on a rainy night. It's our last morning in Hanoi. We're taking a flight this afternoon. It is still raining. Um, you know, the Hanoi specialty this time of year. We are walking to brunch. And for our last meal here, we are having Beng Kuen. Let's go. The one thing about Hanoi's old quarter is that you most likely have to walk in the street. The sidewalks are always taken up by parked motorcycles or restaurant tables. This is our first time here. It came highly recommended. Beng Kuen consists of steamed sheets of rice flour batter filled traditionally with a mixture of minced pork and mushrooms topped with crispy fried shallots. So I ordered a plate of bing kuon with jama o. The important thing about bing kuon is that it has to be really thin, but it needs to not break when you pick it up with your chopsticks. That's something that a lot of restaurants outside of Vietnam struggle with. And the special thing about the dipping sauce here is that they add, I believe, the meat broth to it. Mm. And the tamo is really good. There's also a bunch of herbs to go with. Overall, I thought this place was pretty good, and while their dipping sauce is not traditional, it was interesting and flavorful. My mom, on the other hand, did not like it at all. She prefers the traditional, very light dipping sauce with no added broth. Before heading to the airport, we stopped by this place specializing in Min Luen eel glass noodle soup to get some crispy fried eel for me to take back. Lunch was just some snacks on the plane. So we did buy this at the airport. Ming Zai. These are glutinous rice cakes. In Vietnam, the pros make them the traditional way with pounded glutinous rice, but we actually have an easy recipe for these using glutinous rice flour. So let's have a snack. My mom says it's good, even though it's from the airport. So it comes with one, two, three, four, five, six. Six bing zai. And a whole log of, uh, I guess this is cha chien or cha mo. Got some pepper and salt with lemon. Just regular pepper and salt will work to take out our Cut a little slice. Some people like making a sandwich, but I like stretching it. Adding a little bit of salt and pepper. Putting the meat inside. Rolling it up like this. Mmm. That's actually really good. A bit grainy. There's still some rice grains, but overall, nice and soft and chewy. Such a great snack. And that's it for our Hanoi trip. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for more travel and recipe videos.